It's not about being a good person, cleaning up your act, shaping up your life, making yourself approved before God, presenting yourself in such a way to say, hey, look at me. I, I, I've changed, God. I'm better than I used to be. Great. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we are talking about the solas, the cinco onlys, if you will. Coming up next. All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, new subscribers. Uh, just briefly about me, uh, just so you all know, we're all on the same page. Uh, I am a husband and a father. I do pastor a small church here in Kentucky, I'm originally from California, Southern California, although I grew up in Northern for about 10 years as well. Love being outside, love gardening, and uh, I've got four children. God's been good to us. It's been very hard. Life is hard. I am a regular guy. I don't have any assistance. This is a real backdrop. This is not a real plant. But, you know, uh, that's the only fake thing. But th these are real books. D.A. Carson's dad. The story about him and his testimony. Most of them are just placeholders because they're books I've already read. But they look nice in the background, don't they? It's not a green screen. Anyway, welcome, new subscribers. Thank you. Drop me a comment. Tell me where you're from. Uh, if you're new, I know some, several people came over with a shout out from Jason at Dear Book Christian. Good friend. We've collaborated a lot. I've got several collabs on my channel and his. Uh, if you want to check some of those out, just search on here. Jason, dear what Christian, that sort of thing. So we did Reddit. We did uh, what's called like reading reading Reddit with Richard, I think he called it. <laughs> it was fun. And uh, we went through different theological Reddit things. So check those out. Those are really, really good subject. That's just an introduction. So today we are talking about the five solas. I know last, this week was uh, Halloween or... Reformation Day, uh, All Saints Day, etc. <clears throat> Those are all the, around the 31st and the 1st and so on. Depends on how much or how little you care about Halloween or the Reformation, uh, whether you're going to call it one thing or another. As a Protestant, as a Baptist proper, uh, not in any weird sense, but as one who believes in church autonomy, believers' baptism, and the communion of the saints, um, and, and a few other distinctives. These are convictional distinctives that a Baptist has versus someone like a Presbyterian. Most non-denominational churches are pretty much Baptist churches, just without the name, uh, and there's less association. It is an SBC church, but don't worry, we're not woke. Um, there are a lot of problems in the SBC, and there are a lot of churches that have left the SBC, and there's good reasons why they've left. Uh, I am not okay with a lot of the things going on, but at the moment, I'm in for the fight like several others that I know. But if you want to leave or if you've already left or you're part of a church that's left or you think I'm a heretic because I've stayed, well, let's have a conversation about it. But again, we're talking about the solas today. It was October 31st, 1517, 500 years ago, 504, 505, uh, that the Protestant Reformation took root. Now, this happened because of 1440, the Gutenberg Press, so about 80 years <clears throat> or 70 years, yeah, almost 80 years later, we have the press pushing into what Luther and many others would use is getting the scripture in the hands of the people uh, because popes and councils do err, to quote Martin Luther. And they do. Um, and there have been multiple times over where they've corrected themselves and councils have contradicted themselves and so on. But it's because they're human. I'm not faulting them because of that, but they can't say that they're uh, inspired or infallible, but yet this has been the case. Now, it's not the case so much these days with the Roman Catholic Church, uh, but nevertheless, it's something that does happen and has happened over the centuries, and you can't get around that. Uh, this may be seen by some as a release of a chokehold that the Roman Church had on the church in Western Europe. It might also be seen as division and consternation, and you cause problems, and we've never seen more church and culture division than ever before. Well, that might be true, and in one sense, I would agree with both of those things, but that's, again, an aside to the five solas. We do have division, and part of that is because we don't have a centralized church, but I'm, all, I'm, I'm very much against a centralized um, state church. We can see the terrible badness, as it were, of that, and I think why we are so blessed in America, because we don't have a state church. Now, the Bible <clears throat> is clear uh, in many parts. It's a little bit more particular and 
uh, foggy in other parts, but we have to always have scripture interpret scripture. That's what I seek to do as a pastor. That's what I seek to do as a follower of Christ. That's what I ex should exhort you to do. Whatever flavor Christian you are, you need to have the Bible be the word of God, knowing that the Bible is the word of God, not making it the word of God, but knowing that it is. And then letting the Bible interpret scripture. This is where we actually get literal or literas is the, the Latin word, according to the literature, <clears throat> according to the literature. So these five solas are something that are pulled from the scripture. Now they're man-made, I understand that, uh, but it's still a quintessential foundational principle from for Protestant Reformation and Protestant theology in general. Solas are not just five-point Calvinists or eight-point Calvinists or Arminian or whatever flavor you want to say. No, it's for all Protestants of all time. And really, I would say, again, Protestants, the, it's the, the seeking, it's called reformation. It was reforming, coming back to what it once was because, well, the Roman Catholic Church had strayed significantly. The first of the five are, in essence, the most vital. Remember, this is a man-made system or phrases, yes, but that's like also calling God triune. There is no verse that says the Bible says God is triune, right? But we get that belief from the scripture. Yet this is a core doctrine that all Christians affirm. You have to. If you don't, you're not a Christian. So, number one, sola scriptura. Scripture alone, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, breathed out, some translations say, and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's New King James. Some translations say instruction, etc. Notice, the scripture itself attests to itself. This is because it's God's word. Lest we forget, John 1, for example, in the word, the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. The word of God. How did God create? Even in the beginning, he spoke. This word is vital. It is a non-negotiable for anybody who wants to be a faithful follower of Christ, of God himself being filled with the spirit, living in this world as we do. Where else can we go if not for the scripture? Right. Where else can we go? Our own opinions, right? our own thoughts. Too many people on the theological sides on all parts of the spectrum say, well, God told me. right? God showed me. You hear this? Right? I had a dream, which reminds me very much of Jude. Go read Jude. It's very good. But these dreams and visions abound today with men and women claiming to hear from God. But oftentimes those claims go counter to the word of God. Of course, they would say they don't, but they so often do. Still others in the church after 1517 and before with good intention and evil told people what God meant or said. And there's just this trust not being able to check the word of God, because after all, God spoke to people. He didn't speak to an elite class of individuals, but people. Jesus went to fishermen. He didn't go to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. This shows clearly that the religious elite establishment, Jesus did not favor, not because they were a religious elite and establishment, but because they trusted in that and not God himself. Because they were humble in heart. Blessed are the meek, blessed are the poor, etc. So how can we be sure? How can we know that God is a creator? We can only know if he reveals himself, which he of course did. Matthew 4, 4, Jesus speaking, citing Deuteronomy 8, 3, he answered, it says, It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. This is how we, this is how anyone can come to know and live. That everything proceeds from the mouth of God. So the scriptura is paramount. There's many, many other verses that I could touch on, but these few are essential. These are ones that you can pull from and understand that scripture, we pull everything else out of it. How else can we know God if not from scripture revealing himself, that, that God revealing himself through the scripture? Yes, the creation, Psalm 19, Romans 1, I understand that. But to physically know someone in an intimate, abiding way, we have to know his word. Christian faith stands and falls on this. Sola fide number two, faith alone. Galatians 2.16 
Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Because by the works of the law, no one will be justified or no flesh will be justified. End quote. <clears throat> so no one is justified and made right before a holy God. Nobody. You can't do it. It's not about being a good person, cleaning up your act, shaping up your life, making yourself approved before God, presenting yourself in such a way to say, hey, look at me. I, I, I've changed, God. I'm better than I used to be. Great. Are you righteous? No. Filthy rags. Very common. And that's, of course, the the that time of the month rag, not like kitchen sink rag, but but menstrual rag. I think we probably all know that. If you don't, now you do. Romans 3.23, no one, no matter how good they are, tells us this, right? All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. We finish, we're finished and complete in Christ alone. We believe. John 20.31, New Living Translation says, but these... They, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name, end quote. These things matter. We have life in Christ. This is why John writes. He says, I write these things so that you may know. Believe. This is the order. Believe. You see conviction comes to your heart and you believe. You repent and believe. It's, it's all encapsulated together. It's, it's like two sides of the same coin. You see, you repent and believe. You believe and repent. Number three, sola gratia, grace alone. Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Notice God is preparing work. He says the blueprint. This is what we do. This is what Christians do. This is how you are follow. This is what you do when you follow me. This is the works you do. Now, he doesn't give a list because the list abounds. But nevertheless, it's something that these things is what you do as a Christian. He lays them out. He didn't meticulously t determine all these little things that you would do. No, because then he's determining sin, which God doesn't do. James tells us this. But your works, this is what a Christian, when you follow me, you follow Jesus, you're filled with the Spirit, then this is what you do. So this grace, grace comes through Jesus alone. These are all encapsulated together. They're all folded into each other. First chapter of Ephesians alone is in and through Christ or him 11 times in the first 13 verses. You have to be in Jesus, just like the 747 that is predestined for London from New York City today is the one who has faith in Jesus. The plane is leaving whether you're on the plane or not. Get on the plane of Christ, as it were. Right? The it's going. This is what it is. Get there. Repent and believe. It's free. Free gift. Salvation. Go. You don't bring anything to you. You don't say, well, I have my 1%. No. Rather, you repent and believe. That's what this is all about. And this was, again, abused in the Middle Ages and up into the Reformation time because there was, well, you have to do these other things. You have to add to your salvation. It's a it's a joint effort. No. So again, pause just for a moment before we get to the other two. You might be thinking, yeah, well, what about this first? What about that first? What about that thing or this? I know it's not a deep dive. I know. Just a brief, really. Briefing, a brief briefing. But you might be thinking, yeah, but well, James says, you know, faith alone. It, it just, you're just, it's dead, right? You know how you can't justify you. Mm -hmm. That's right. But we have to remember that these five solas are, they're foundational for the pre-Christian or the unbeliever, the person before Christ, right? Before they come to Christ, this is what you're doing. As soon as you have the light switched on, you have to say, well, how much, how quickly the light travels, you just switch it on, the light comes on. Right? So you come, you're justified, as Galatians 2 says, justified by faith in Jesus, then that faith, that justification, then produces good works. Okay, you're not kind of this in tandem, like going to church and doing this and Awana or Navigators or or this thing at college or the Baptist whatever or the Presbyterian thing or I got baptized or the... No, you're not bringing these things in for your salvation. It's the pre-Christian thing. James is a very good book and there's no contention between James and Paul. One quintessential example is James and Paul, the only two who cite him, is cite Abraham, who believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. 
Now, he acted on that belief by leaving Ur of the Chaldees, going and sacrificing or trying to sacrifice and God stopping him, Isaac, his son, and many other things. So this is for the pre-Christian. This is how, right, you're outside the, the gates, as it were, of salvation. So human beings don't bring their good works, okay? They don't bring or add salvation, add anything to their faith. It's not a combo deal where we bring 50%, God brings 50%, or even he does 99 and we do one. No. This is where we see and understand Sola Scriptura. Number four, Sola Christus, Christ alone, simply that Jesus is the only way. Not popes, not councils, not old dead guys or famous living smart guys. Jesus alone saves. It's his work, his righteousness. John 14, 6, just Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 1 Peter 2, 7 and 8. Now, you who believe, notice you who believe, that's the contingency, you believe, there isn't anything else. You have to believe. This stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, right, there's the black and white, day and night, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and the stone that causes people to stumble, the rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also they were predestined to do. There's that similar language in what God is doing. He's playing and, 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 and laying it out for us. This is the blueprint, as it were, that you should walk in them. If you stumble and disobey, you don't believe, this is the blueprint you walk in. Not that God is making you sin. No, that's nonsense. That's heresy. So it's not Buddha, not Joseph Smith, not William Miller or Mary Baker Eddy or Muhammad, not Donald Trump, not Joe Biden, not Elon Musk, not Pope Francis, not Pope John Paul. Christ alone is who saves, no one else. Believe in Jesus and be saved. Be justified by your creator, before your creator. Last one, number five, sola deo gloria. Romans 3, 20, for the works of the law, no human will be justified in his sight. Since through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. There is, again, believe, believe, believe. That's what it's called. That's the contingency. That's the factor. If you don't believe, you are lost. If you do believe, you are saved. But there is no distinction. Notice this. Notice how clear Paul is. Romans is such a great book, and there's contention on this, especially Romans 8 through 11. But the bottom line is you have to believe. You have to repent. You have to turn to Christ. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. These are vital, aren't they? These are few verses encapsulate the totality of the others. No works to condemn simple humanity to God. Righteousness comes through Jesus not keeping the law, right? This is something in my own testimony. I, I got to keep the law. I got to keep do these right things. All have sinned. All have missed the mark. This is the language here. Like an archer that pulls back and is ready for the bullseye. Always hitting the mark. That's the goal. You're always supposed to hit the bullseye. But you don't, do you? I don't. And I know you don't either. Right? We get angry. We lust. We steal. We covet. We have other idols. We have other gods. The Ten Commandments, right? We deviate. And that's what sin is. That's where the word sin, you're missing the mark. You're supposed to hit... Here, boom, right in the middle, and you don't. We deviate, even if it's a little bit. You know, nine times out of ten is still 90%, isn't it? You get 100%. Well, that's where Jesus comes in. You know, we hear the phrase, she missed the mark, right? We are justified as a gift, not something that is due us. If we worked for it, we'd be paid and thus be paid accordingly, not a gift. Just like you work your job or you do a gig or, you know, your parents give whatever and you after you rake the leaves or something. You worked. No one is saying, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you for this. No, you, you deserve it. Now, you might still be have gratitude, right? I have gratitude when I have a job selling phones, as I did before I pastored a church, working for Verizon. I, had, I was thankful for my job. But I earned that money. I earned it. No one gave it to me. It wasn't a gift. Now, again, I'm thankful for the job to have the opportunity to earn the money. But it's what is due, it's what is owed. Now, if they just say, hey, here's an extra hundred bucks, here's a bonus, thank you. That's extra. That's grace. 
So the five solas are simply a way to understand salvation given by God through his son, Jesus Christ, and be emboldened by his spirit. Hope this finds you well. Uh, go ahead and um, like and subscribe if you have not already. If you're new, please do that. I'm uh, trying to get to a thousand. So help me out with that. Uh, I don't want to beg, but I will if I have to. I'm just kidding. Uh, but no. Yeah, drop me a comment. Tell me if you're new, uh, where you're from. You don't have to give me your address. Don't do that. But city or state, that'd be cool. I always like to see where people are from. And uh, anything else, questions, comments, other verses I should have included, please let me know. Till then, we'll see you later. Be against the world for the world.